Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. May 24th, 2018. The Kuna Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. Cleaning up your financial bull. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. Why am I doing it? Why am I doing it? That's a question now many are asking me in private. Uh, let me be very honest with you, my friends. Uh, we are now involved in a titanic struggle uh, with the establishment. And it's not just happening in Washington. It's happening here in Massachusetts. And as you know, the heart and soul of the liberals' grip on power on this state, and it now really is in many ways a one-party democratic mafia state, is through the courts and through the judicial system. By the way, what's happening micro in Massachusetts is what's happening now increasingly across the entire country. They are using judicial supremacy as a way to destroy the Constitution, undermine our fundamental rights and liberties, and most importantly, put the rights of criminals above those of victims. What they want is to make law-abiding, decent Americans feel like strangers and exiles in their own country. To make law-abiding, decent people feel like this is no longer their country or their nation. And so that they will become so demoralized and so discouraged that there will be no resistance left to liberal political rule. And I've got to tell you this, behind the scenes... The Democrats and the mainstream media are now petrified, petrified about the rally that's going to be held in about two hours, two hours, nine minutes to be technically, to be technically correct. They fear that if there is a major uprising, if thousands of people do end up showing up to impeach and remove this arrogant, power hungry, out of control, radical leftist judge. They know clearly that then this is the beginning of the end. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen right away. But then the precedent will be established. If one corrupt judge goes, then another corrupt judge can go. And before you know it, the liberal judiciary itself will begin to collapse. And so privately now, behind the scenes, they desperately want this rally to fail. They are putting, exerting maximum pressure on the mainstream media to not cover this scandal. This is not a controversy. What the Democrats are now saying is, well, it's a controversy. It's, these, are some of, these are controversial decisions by Judge Timothy Feely. No, that's not a controversy. This is a scandal. There is no controversy here, with all due respect. There are certain basic red lines in a civilized society that you can never allow to be established or be crossed. And this judge, look, I have a bad day. Brittany has a bad day. You have a bad day. We all have bad days. We all make mistakes. This is not just one bad decision. This is a pattern, a systematic pattern of outrageous unacceptable decisions this judge is out of control and he is drunk with power lord acton famously said and this applies to judge timothy feely that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely my friends that's what's happening to this state you want to understand the deep state the fbi the cia spygate they're drunk with power They've been corrupted with absolute power. No checks and balances, no transparency, no accountability, and after a while you have created, I'm not kidding, a monster. Well, on a micro level, you know, it's, it's Massachusetts, it's not Washington, it's not America, but on a micro level, that's exactly what's happening here. The Democrats control overwhelmingly the State House and the State Senate. And they control the media, and they control academia, and they control public education, especially in this state. They control the unions. They control the massive state bureaucracy, and they control the judges. 
And that's the essence of their hakarama. And now they have become so corrupted by power, by one party democratic rule, that they believe they can do anything with impunity. And that the peasants, the people, have been so beaten down, so demoralized, so conv- so cynical, so convinced, you can't beat the man. You can't beat the one-party regime. You can't beat the hackerama. They are now convinced that they own us, that we're serfs. We're not citizens, we're subjects. We're serfs. And they can inflict abuse upon abuse upon abuse. Crime upon crime upon crime. Here you have a judge. This should not be a liberal, conservative, Republican, Democrat, black, white, young, old, whatever issue. This should be a human issue. He has released child rapists and child molesters. He released Daniel Bove, accused of repeatedly raping a 12-year-old boy, sorry, a 12-year-old girl, and told him he had a right to make a living and and do home improvement work on numerous homes, even though there would be children in those homes. He has released MS-13 gangbangers, gangsters, armed robbers, armed burglars. They arrested a man, the police did. 80 charges, serious gun charges. The police and the prosecutors begged the judge, don't release John D. Williams within a month Somebody will be killed by this lunatic. He's going to take a gun and he's going to kill somebody. To the day, 30 days after Judge Feely released John D. Williams, he went up to Maine. He killed and actually ambushed and shot and killed Corporal Eugene Cole. He shot him dead like a dog. He then stole his cruiser and robbed a store. Judge Feely has blood on his hands. Judge Feely is responsible for why Corporal Cole is now dead. His wife will never see her husband again. His children will never see their father again. His siblings will never see him again. That community in Maine loved that man. They said he was a good, decent man who loved to be a police officer and protect the community. And yet Feely let Williams loose and Williams murdered Corporal Eugene Cole. Silence. Silence. Now, my friends, we're not just talking about cop killers. Now we're not even talking about child molesters. Now we're talking about a heroin fentanyl epidemic, a drug epidemic, an opiate epidemic, killing 60,000 Americans a year. A year. That's the Vietnam War was 59,000 dead. This is Vietnam every year. In Massachusetts, nearly 2,000 people last year alone died from drug, especially heroin, fentanyl overdoses. In Salem, the police knew who Manuel Soto Vettini was. They all know him. He's a notorious local heroin dealer. The police have openly said they believe there are dozens of people dead because of this man. Because of the heroin and the drugs that he traffics that he traffics in every day. And so the residents on the street whereby he's dealing drugs begged the city, begged the police to do something. They set up a sting operation. These cops put their lives on the line. 
Sean Gannon, down on Cape Cod, just trying to execute an arrest warrant for a person who had been charged with over 112 crimes. Boom, shot right in the head. They put their lives on the line to arrest this guy, Manuel Soto Vitini. They nabbed him. 40 bags of heroin hidden in his black luxurious Volvo. Three bags of cocaine. He pled guilty. There's no debate. He's a convicted heroin dealer. They want the mandatory minimum. Put this guy behind bars. Judge Feely, to the shock and horror of the victims of all of those who have died from heroin overdoses, to the shock of the prosecutor, to the shock of the police officers who arrested him and put their lives on the line, looked at this man, this scumbag, this lowlife, this animal, and praised him as a noble family man, as a businessman, as a man who was just taking care of the best interests of his family. He let him out on the street without even serving a minute in prison. You know what the police have told me? It's no longer a question of if, Jeff. It's a question of when. Someone else is going to die because of him. It could be your child. It could be my child. It could be your child. It could be anybody's child. But people will die because of this decision. And now, for the last week and a half, and you're going to hear her at 245, a mother, Lucy Kohler, who lost her son, Kyle, to a fentanyl overdose in last October, has now been holding up pictures of her dead son, along with 40 to 50 parents. Most of them are going to be there today. And they have been holding up. They're not going to let go. It's been a week and a half. And this demented, sick judge has now sent his female staffer to give them the middle finger, to tell them to go get a life, telling them, good luck with your rally, wink, wink. I'm untouchable. There's nothing you can do to me. The reason why I'm doing this, even though it's putting me in tremendous personal danger, from Sato Vitini, from drug dealers, I'm going to be honest with you, from members of the Democratic establishment who despise and hate me. I've been getting all kinds of death threats because of this. I'll tell you why I'm doing it. For my son, for my daughter, for Lucy Kohler, for Kyle Kohler, for the hundreds and hundreds of people who have died because of this heroin epidemic that should not be allowed to happen and would not take place if these judges wouldn't let these drug dealers, child molesters, and cop killers out on the streets. He is jeopardizing our very lives and public safety. He is a menace. He is a clear and present danger. He is engaged in blatant judicial misconduct. If this judge will not be impeached or removed, then I am telling you, my friends, this is no longer a republic and this is no longer a democracy. That's what this issue to me is about. Who controls our communities? Who controls our streets? Who runs our state? We the people or these unelected, unaccountable, radical leftist judges? My friends, I will be there at 4.15 in front of the J. Michael Ruane Judicial Building on Federal Street in Salem. I hope you will be there too. 2.23 here on the great WRKO. Okay, my friends, joining me now is somebody who will be attending the rally. In fact, he'll be right up there with me is Jay McMahon. Jay, thank you so much for coming on the Cooner Report. I really appreciate it. 
I love being on with the Boston Bulldozer. Thank you for having me on, Jeff, and hello, Boston and Massachusetts. Jay, I've got to ask you, why are you attending the rally? Why will you be speaking with me at the rally? Well, first of all, uh, this decision by this judge is so absurd. And it flies in the face of everything that law enforcement is trying to do in Massachusetts. We have an opiate crisis here, which really is a curse. And it has touched every family in the Commonwealth. And it is absurd that this judge would just cut this guy loose, knowing he had 40 bags of heroin in the car. It, 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 it defies uh, it, it just defies the law and it defies uh, anything that could happen here in our, in our situation. I can't believe that this guy did what he did. Now, I have a son or I had a son who I lost to the opiate crisis. My son, Joel, was in the United States Army. He wanted to make the military his career. He was part of uh, Iraqi freedom in 2003. He was one of the first troops to enter Baghdad. He was um, in part of a night uh, mission, and he got injured. They were under enemy fire, but he didn't get injured by enemy fire, and he ruined his back. So the situation was that uh, the military tried to treat him for it, and they couldn't treat him, and so they discharged him to the VA and make a long story short, the VA treated him with Oxycontin. And basically they made, they made what to my son, they made him what they did to tens of thousands of other disabled American veterans, turn them into opiate addicts. I, in uh, 2008, I got the bad news uh, that my son had died. Now, I'll t I got to tell you, anybody who's anybody knows in Massachusetts, we've got a crisis on our hands. It's not abating. It's getting worse. As you know, I'm, an, I'm a candidate for attorney general. That's another reason why I'm coming here, to let my First Amendment, uh, to exercise my First Amendment about this decision by this judge. And just the way I see it, this decision is so deplorable that it just accentuates what the liberals have been doing in Massachusetts for the last 20 years. I said we have a crisis. We're sending the wrong message. We're sending a message here that Massachusetts is open for business. Come on in. And if you're an illegal alien, we'll even give you further consideration and not even sentence you. I, it is absolutely nutty and it's getting worse. One of my platforms in fighting the opioid crisis in Massachusetts is extreme prosecution. In other words, going to the max with these people. Take them to trial, go for the maximum sentence, put them away, and, take and, and stand behind law enforcement. But we're not doing that here. This decision is a slap in the face to law enforcement. And that's why I'm going to be there at, at Salem. And I'm going to speak there in Salem. And one of my messages is we need extreme prosecution. Not what these liberal judges are doing. Because we have to send a message that Massachusetts is no longer open for business for these drug peddlers and these traffickers. So that's my that's my pitch, Jim. Jay, um, I know you're running against Attorney General Hold It Healy. Maura Healy. Why has Maura Healy been so silent? Where is Charlie Baker? Where is the Boston Globe? Where is the mainstream media? Why are they, why are they scared and why, are, why do they refuse to speak out against this corrupt, out-of-control, arrogant liberal judge? Well, I'm going to tell you something. That's, you, you just hit it on the head why they are not. He's one of their own. They never speak out against one of their own. It's, it's incredible how they give these kind of judges a pass. I mean, um, does Maria Lopez come to mind uh, back at, uh, several years ago, or maybe a little more than several years ago? They give, they give passes to these judges. Now, I've got to tell you something. This, this guy here, this judge in Essex, Essex Superior Court, 
is the poster child for why we need elected judges in Massachusetts. You you know the recall process is so long and so involved that when you finally start getting through it, these liberal politicians rescue these guys anyway, and they let them retire and get off the bench, and they, they let them fill out their retirement in some other, some other job, some judge and some, uh, some lawyer and some uh, department where they need another lawyer that doesn't, know, doesn't do anything. I mean, that's how they do that. The liberals protect themselves, and that's why you've got to hear nothing about it in the globe. Jay, I am... Um my deepest condolences. I am so sorry for the loss of your boy. Uh, Jay, I can't wait to meet you. I really, I want to be so proud to be with you, standing shoulder to shoulder. Uh, Jay, you'll be there at 415? Absolutely. I'm on my way right now. Jay, God bless you, and I'll see you soon, my friend. Thank you, Jeff. We will talk some more. Take care. God bless you. 617-266-6868. Please, if you can. I know you're busy, many of you are working, but if you can make it, it would mean the world to me, to Lucy Kohler, to her dead son, to Jay, to his dead son. There are so many of our children who have died because of this opiate epidemic. We need to take our stand now. We're going to be at the on Federal Street in front of the J. Michael Ruane building at 415. Please, Cooner Country, if you can come, come. Okay. Pro-choice advocates are now going to rally in Boston this evening against a Trump administration edict. I'll bet you dollars to donuts. The Globe will cover that. They'll splash it on the front page. Any takers? WRKO's Bill Trefiro has the latest from the newsroom. Take it away, Bill. Okay, my friends, 236 here on the great WRKO. The WRKO box office, ding, 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 is now open. Be the seventh caller at 617-266-6868. You can win a pair of tickets to see legendary Grammy Award winner Engelbert Humperdinck at the Lynn Auditorium on Sunday, October 14th at 8 p.m. For tickets and information, visit lynnauditorium.com. Thank you to this week's prize sponsor, the Lynn Auditorium. So be the sixth caller and you got yourself a pair of free tickets to see Engelbert Humperdinck. Sorry, Engelbert Humperdinck. 617-266-6868. Okay, my friends, uh, we're about to leave the studio in, ooh, about 23 minutes, heading off to the rally to impeach Judge Feely. Charlotte in Boston. Thanks for holding, Charlotte, and welcome. Hey there, B&B, Boston Bulldozer. Hi, Charlotte. Hi. I'll be quick. I know you're busy. I have two quick questions. The judge, on record, said that this criminal drug dealer was supporting his family. So my question is, if he was providing the income for the girlfriend and the mother, can someone look into their welfare status and their housing status? Because if they were getting money from him, that's called fraud. That's number one. Number two, if fentanyl is, no, it is. Fentanyl is such a deadly drug. Why does it, because it kills people, why doesn't it carry carry a capital crime offense to it? Charlotte, um, <clears throat> have you called the show before? Once upon a time. I love you in a non-sexual way, Charlotte. Ditto. So can you look into the wealthiest status of uh, the baby mama and uh, the, the mother? <laughs> Charlotte, I will. And thank you so much. God bless you, Charlotte. God bless. Bye. Uh, she nailed it. Uh, she nailed it. And I'm definitely going to look into it. I will bet you the best steak at the Hanover Street Chop House. The best steak. Here, I'll make you two bets right now. Number one, that little, that little puny, little dinky rally, that pro-choice rally, is going to be all over the Boston Globe, okay? They're going to get ten people. It's going to be all over the Globe. Good luck seeing our rally in the Globe. Good luck. Okay, that's number one. Number two, I'll bet you, I'll bet you the Porter House. Okay, that's their best steak. The Porterhouse steak at the Hanover Street Chop House. The, the girlfriend's on welfare. The mother's on welfare. 
Everybody's on welfare. I'll even go further. I bet they're on Section 8. I bet they're collecting food stamps. I, I bet they're collecting mass health. The whole, I, I bet you everything for them is free. And the heroin cash, that's, they put in their pocket. He walked into that courtroom. That judge, by the way, reduced his bail from over 100000 to $35,000. He walked in with a suitcase full of cash. Boom. Cash money, baby. He paid that thing, no problem. 35000 for Manuel Soto Vettini. No problemo, baby. That's the kind of guy Feely is putting out onto the streets. You know, so, hey, according to him, maybe we should all get into the heroin business. Hey, you're just providing for your family, for God's sakes. 617-266-6868. Brittany, I know you want to say something because you're obviously going to be there. And in many ways, you're the one of the key organizers of this rally behind the scenes. And your point is that young people, millennials especially, should be at that rally. Why? Well- Look, Salem is obviously my hometown, born and raised, and it's really upsetting um, that something like this would happen in the city that I grew up in. So I would really love to see classmates of mine, former classmates, um, people that I grew up with, uh, show up to this rally and support to impeach Judge Feely because it's our classmates and people that are our age, the millennials that are losing their lives to opioids and to heroin. This is an epidemic and this is a crisis and we have to do something about it. So it's us, the millennials, that are dying and everyone who has lost a friend, because I know that we've all lost friends to opioids and we need to get out there and go to the courthouse today and hold a sign and say that we want him to be impeached because if we all show up they'll do something about it so it's us that are dying it's not the baby boomers it's the millennials so i would love to see my former classmates and people that i grew up with show up there with signs and stand hand in hand and call for his impeachment because he absolutely needs to be impeached well you know Brittany, you make a very good point i mean look at lucy kohler's boy kyle 29 Look at Jay McMahon's boy. He was in his 20s when he died. Look at all these people that are dying of overdoses. So many of them. 25, 26, 27, 28, 30, 31. These are all millennials. These are our young people. And they're getting hooked on this devastating, highly addictive drug, whether it's fentanyl, heroin, whatever, the opiates. And it's, it's decimating us. It's decimating them. It's decimating us. And so I hope you're right, Brittany. I hope a lot of young people show up because in many ways, they're the primary victims of this. Exactly. That's my point. So this affects all of the North Shore. So I just would love to see everyone come out and support this cause. Okay, my friends. um, I've got an interview coming up next. Fasten your seatbelts. You got to hear this one. Lucy Kohler the woman who has been in front of the Salem Superior Courthouse for the last couple of weeks, holding up a sign of her dead son, Kyle. She will tell you how they've treated her. That interview, next. Welcome back to the Cooner Report. Okay, my friends. As you know, in about, ooh, an hour and a half approximately, 4.15 p.m., I'm going to be leading a rally in front of the Salem Superior Courthouse. I am hoping all of you can make it to protest Judge Timothy Feely, demand that he be removed and impeached from office. And if you want to know why, there are many reasons, but if you want to know why, one of the big reasons... I want you now to listen to this guest that we're going to have on now. She is one of the major reasons why I am doing this rally, and I'm hoping as many of you can show up as possible. She is Lucy Kohler, the mother of Kyle Kohler. Lucy, I know this must be extremely difficult for you. Thank you so much for coming on the Kuna Report and sharing your story with us. You're very welcome. Um, Lucy, I have to ask you right out of the gate. 
Why are you demanding that Judge Feely be removed from office? Why do you think he needs to go? The opioid epidemic has taken the lives of many, including my son. What we can do as a society is to try to help the addicted and do what we can to take heroin and other drugs off the street. Judge Feely blatantly disregarded this when he set free a known dealer and rationalized his decision with comments about it being a money crime. People making money off of those struggling with addictions is what causes an epidemic. The legal system should support those that are struggling with addiction and not those that are causing the issue by selling drugs. It's a disgrace. Lucy, if I'm getting too personal, please let me know. What happened to Kyle? What happened to your boy? Um, My son died. He died of a fentanyl overdose, pure fentanyl, at age 29. Oh, my God. He died because we couldn't provide enough support to him and the others struggling with addiction and because we didn't prosecute those that keep the drugs on the streets. My son's dealer is still walking around free, which really saddens me. Uh uh, I can. I, I got to tell you, as as the parent of two children myself, Lucy, uh, what you're describing is almost a nightmare. I mean, it is a nightmare. It's a parent's nightmare. And I'm it just is. curious. I know that you have been almost single-handedly, along with some other parents, they're joining you, uh, parents who've lost loved ones to heroin, fentanyl, opiate overdoses, that you have been going to the courthouse in Salem, holding up signs with pictures of your beautiful boy, Kyle, demanding that Judge Feely be removed from office. You want to confront Feely. You want him to see the damage that he's doing, the people that he's killing when he releases these heroin dealers like Soto Vettini. And I'm just curious, why have you been going to that courthouse almost every day? What, what's the point of your almost single, single-minded protest against the corrupt judicial system in Massachusetts? Well, after I lost my son, I realized I couldn't cry every day. I had to take a stand somewhere to fight for those who are no longer here to fight for themselves. I feel the verdict that was issued in this case made me realize it was time to make a stand to fight, to keep the drugs off the street and do what I can to save the lives of others and spare parents, siblings, and significant others of the heartache um, our family knows too well. Uh, you know, you when we you and I talked off the air, you before you came on the air, obviously to do this interview, you told me of an incident that you had, where there you were, you were holding a picture of your boy, I believe, you were holding up a sign protesting Judge Feely, and a colleague of Judge Feely's saw you, I believe, it was on the sidewalk. Yes. Yeah. And what did she say to you? I want the audience to hear this. I want them to know how arrogant these people are. She said, uh, Judge Feely is a great guy. And I said back to her, I guess you've never lost a child of an overdose. And then she turned around and looked and stated, good luck with that. And I stated back, thank you. What you mean, good luck with that is in good luck with the rally? Yes. Wow. So... So, I mean, very she was... Sar- very sarcastic. Yeah, she's being... Sar- she's taunting you. Yes. Unbelievable. So, Lucy, I'm sorry, but th- they're laughing at you. They're laughing at us. They're yeah. laughing at your boy. They're laughing at us. As if we're so untouchable, you can have as many protests and rallies as you want. Good luck, because nothing's going to happen to us. A- am I wrong, That's Lucy? Right. No, you're exactly right. And we're going to make a stand and stick up for these children. Lucy, um, I, this, is unbelie- this is unbelievable. I mean, honestly, I got smoke coming out of my ears. My blood is boiling. Um, yeah. Lucy, I've got to ask you, when you heard about the decision that uh, Judge Feely made, where he called it a money crime, 
with this dr heroin dealer who was busted with over 40 bags of uh, small bags of heroin uh, that he wouldn't even give him a minute, a day, an hour in jail and that he fact called him a family man and an entrepreneur who was just dealing heroin and killing people because he's trying to make a living for his family. When you found out that he let this guy, Manuel Soto Vettini, walk free, what was your reaction? What was your gut feeling when you heard about that? Um, to me, it felt heartbreaking. There was filing an arrest um, to a known dealer on the street to save lives. Instead, he released him to continue selling. I feel like we punish those with addiction, we shame them, and yet those who sell to them are free. This is a real shame to me. It's disgusting. Uh, have you, now, I know you've been to the courthouse a few times. I know, in fact, what, yesterday you went again to protest. Um, have you invited other parents who have lost loved ones? Are they joining you as well in your protest? Yes, parents, friends, significant others. You know, we cry putting the posters together. It's just very sad. So what have you done, you and these other parents who've lost, you know, children, sons, daughters, uh, grandchildren? So you put posters of your loved ones who've died due to heroin or opiate overdoses. And you're, you're putting these posters where, if you don't mind me asking, Lucy? Oh, at the courthouse. We're holding them. Loved you, ones are holding them. You're holding them, and are you getting any sympathy from people who are going into the courthouse or coming out of the courthouse? Honestly, we're mostly getting sympathy. That one woman was the only one that didn't get thumbs up. Well, sure. She's working with Feely. <laughs> yeah, she's trying to protect her own job, Lucy. Well, I figured that as much. <laughs> um. But, uh, you know, I'm not there to fight or argue with someone um, like that. I'm there to protest this and do the best I can with it. Lucy, um, why, first of all, will you be coming to today's rally at 415? Yes, I will. Uh, just for the audience, why are you coming? I'm coming for all the children that have died of drug overdoses and all the parents that are hurting, mothers, siblings, friends, and to stop this. Well, Lucy, um, I said this to you off air, and I want to say it to you now on the air. Um, mm -hmm. I want to personally invite you, when you do come, I know you're working, so you may be a little bit late. It starts at 4.15, but you said you may make it for 4.30 or 4.45. Whenever you make That's it, correct. I want you to come right up to the front. I want you to be right beside me, and I want to introduce you to everybody in the audience. Is that okay? Yes, it would be my pleasure, and oh. with great honor, I will be there next to you. And, and, and Lucy, if you want to say a few words, I'm more than happy to have you say a few words. If you don't, that's obviously up to you. Uh, but I want you to know this from the bottom of my heart. I'm doing this for Kyle. I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this for all of the parents. Well, uh, Lucy, make me cry. Lucy, I want you to know this. You need to have a voice. And you know, it breaks my heart. I have a little boy. I have a little girl. And I know Kyle was just like them. I know that. They're running outside. They're playing. They're playing with insects or animals or playing baseball or whatever it is. And they have the whole world and the whole future in front of them. And then because of this disgusting drug, this epidemic that is taking away so many of our young people, your boy is gone. And I know for a parent that is the worst nightmare that can ever befall a parent. And so I, I don't want this to happen to any more children. I don't want this to happen to any more parents. I don't want this to happen to any more people. And it's going to continue to happen, Lucy, until we get this judge removed. And That's so right. I want you to know that I'm really looking forward to meeting you. I think you're incredibly brave, incredibly courageous. And I know that Kyle is looking upon you from heaven with a big smile. And today I want to do it for Kyle. Can we do it for Kyle today, Lucy? Yes, we can. We can do it for Kyle today. And I really appreciate this. Thank you. Lucy, it's, it's my pleasure. 
Um, again, I will see you uh, now in what, maybe an hour, 15 minutes. So, Lucy, God bless you, and please um, stay strong. Stay strong. I will, and I look forward to meeting you. God bless you, Lucy, and um, take care. Thank you so much for coming on. You're welcome. God bless you. you. Okay, my friends, uh, look, I'm about to leave. Uh, I'm going to be heading off to the Salem Superior Court. Uh, it's right there, 415. Uh, please, you can take public transportation. There's a train station literally right beside it. Um, Brittany's coming with me. We're all going to be heading there. Let's take a stand now for justice, for our children, for our grandchildren. You just heard Lucy Kohler. She lost her son. How many more have to die? How many more before we say enough is enough? Judge Feely must go. The sooner, the better. Okay, my friends, I'm off. I hope I can see as many of you there as possible. Cooner country, we can do it. But I need you to show up from me to you. God bless you. And I will see you in front of the Salem Superior Courthouse at 415. I got to go. Bye-bye. The Cooner Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. 888-800-1881. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services.